Telephone conversation between President Johnson and Senator Richard Russell on November 29, 1963, at 4.05 p.m. Thank you, Senator Russell. Is our connection good? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you very well. Thank you very much. Well, he looked through the telescopic sight himself and said, Mr. President, 
I could uh, hit a man on that street going 20 miles an hour as easy as I could hit you sitting talking to you. That's his language. Okay, now. Well, I, I, I really, Mr. President, unless you, uh, well, I, I, I'm, uh, unless you really think it'd be of some benefit, yeah, I know it would be. It would save my life. I declare, I don't want to save. Myself. I know you don't want to do anything, but I want you to, and I think that this is important enough, and you'll see why. Now, the next thing I, I know how you feel about this CIA, but they are worried about having to go into a lot of this stuff with Foreign Relations Committee. How much of a problem would it give you to just quietly let Fulbright and uh, Hickenlooper come into your CIA committee? As long as it's confined to those two, it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't uh, prevent well, that's, any that's problem. All, that, that's all we'd make it now. But uh, there'd be changes made up there, and I don't want some of those fellas. Some of those fellas got no business there. Well, I've got a lot of bad talkers on that committee. Why don't you do it by invitation then? And we, we've had a... A splendid record up to now. There's never been one. You got a perfect one. You got a perfect one, and they—that's what—that's they—they know that, but they—they—they they, they worried about See, they I've can't been do it. With careful. I've even kept Margaret T. Smith off that yeah. committee, though I've got a lot of faith in her, but I've kept her off. Yeah. Because I just want to be sure that I knew what I was doing. That's right. Couldn't you do it quietly by invitation, uh, just yes, on I a could. personal basis, and then that invitation to end any time you wanted to, and I'd say that to them. Yes, I'd be glad to do that. Mm -hmm. Invite them over there. Okay, when are you coming back? Well, I just got out of him coming in there Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. I had a nice visit with your governor and told yeah, him where you didn't tell me you didn't invite him up here. I didn't invite him up here. Well, how do you have to get a hold of him? You, had him you told me that he was coming up here. Oh. Well, I came back in my office. I told you to tell him that I wanted to see him. I know it. That's so, why I couldn't understand it. Well, I, when I came back in my office, I told him that you said he was going to have lunch with you and to get a hold of him and tell him I wanted to see him before I went back. Oh. Hell, I hadn't invited him up here. I never heard of it, but well, after I he's up there. I saw what he did in the box there with uh, Lady Bud. Oh, they they they, uh, they heard that he was coming, you see, when I, when you told me that afternoon that he was coming, and so they they wanted some Southerner, some outstanding Southerner. Well, that was a good thing. I don't think you could have done better, but I just, I just surprised you didn't oh. have No, no, I didn't know at the time I'd seen you that he was invited. I, I don't oh, know. I see, see Bird got up a list of folks, and... Uh, uh, I guess he's well, got a medicine. Well, you could have done better than got him. He's awful nice young fella. Well, yeah. And you just threw in the very soul out of him. Well, I just, uh, I just told him how much I love Georgia, and he told the press that his grandpappy came from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, he's a good boy. Well, Georgia's a good state. That's what I like about well, it. Georgia's a good state. And, uh, uh... Mr. Burton, can't you get someone else? Well, if time? I can, I will, but I'm not going to... Uh, uh, this country's got a lot of confidence in you, and if I had my way, you'd be in my place and I'd trade with you. Oh, no, that would never do. Well, it would, I'd too. I'd go crazy in six weeks. Country be in, country be in a hell of a lot better shape. And you, you're going to run it next nine years, and I'll be oh, dead no, another two, no. three years. Anyhow. You get your rest. I don't want to bother you anymore, but I'm going to have to be calling you every once in a while. Well, so. you know I'm always available. Uh, okay. All right. Goodbye. Well, you right. think about anybody else now besides Medina. Well, I, I don't well, know. What about that, that old man died is on that cir the circuit court down there that oh, I Oh, he would have been ideal, but he's dead. Mm, that other fellow. He's a magnificent man. He'd have been perfect. That fellow you got on there now, though, is not too good, is he? Tuttle, no. No, Tuttle. He's an Eisenhower appointee? Yeah. He's yeah. a pretty good man, but. Uh, they tell me he gives them some problems about that circuit. He, he, he's he's going to give them more problems. He's the kind of fellow that thinks he's the last word. Mm -hmm. Thinks he's the last word. Mm -hmm. Isn't there someone there? Uh, you know Prettyman? Yeah. What do you think about him? Pretty good man. He's getting a little old, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much I don't a good think man. He's, I don't think he's known. Well, he's not, but uh, he don't have to be. He doesn't have to be. Uh, now, you're going to let the Attorney General nominate someone, aren't you? No. Uh-uh. Well, you going to have Hoover on there? No. It's his report. Oh, that's right. That's right. It wouldn't do. But uh, he's uh, he's agreeable to folks like Dulles. Well, that was a good man. That's a happy thought. McCloy. McCloy, I guess, is a good man. I don't think he, I don't want him in his high regards. I do tell him, but he's all right. He's got a big reputation. Let me see. If I think of a judge in the next 30, 40 minutes, I'll Thank you. call you. But you, you. you can get plenty of them. Thank uh, you. Some of these circuit court judges, some right there in the district. One or two what do you think about a justice sitting on I don't I think it'd be all right. I think it'd be all right. Why, why shouldn't you? How many say you don't have a president assassinated but every 50 years? Well, they put the president assassinated every 50 years. They put them on the bus and 
far, you know what? He's that far he's against it now. They're afraid it might get in here, Coach. Well, I guess so, I don't know. That's probably the deer, Coach. Well, I guess. That's probably the deer. I mean, that's probably the deer, yeah. I'm not very good on thinking about things. Well, give me the arguments uh, why they ought to. Well, give me the arguments why they ought to. Well, the matter of this magnitude, of course, if the deer is of this magnitude, the American people would be up to it. They have a number of that's the only far able and you got you have second court judges are far able and some of you second court judges are far able. but that is the argument Supreme Court judge the only argument you'd make for it if argument you'd make for it if, if you had some top flight Supreme Court uh, state Supreme Court their chief justice knew but they're not known all over the country I don't care how able they are this thing of television and uh, radio has narrowed the group of celebrities that just so was in the very highest position. I don't know. You've got some smart folks around you that can give you a name some outstanding around you that can give you the second court judge. United States. All right. Uh -huh.